Hello there guys and welcome to the complete settings guide for P3D version 4. I have been receiving numerous questions as to what kind of add-ons I'm using in P3D version 4, what are my settings, and I have actually changed things to an extent that warrants another complete settings guide for P3D version 4. In this video I'm going to show you all my settings and all the add-ons that I use. A quick note before we delve into the simulator settings, if you are interested in my PC specs, they are available at www.q8pilot.com. The link will be available in the description of the video. Alright, let us begin. In terms of image and texture quality, um, FXAA is turned off as it is always the case in all my videos. Anti-aliasing is at 4x SSAA. Just quickly on anti-aliasing if you're running the sim at a higher resolution so if you have a 4k monitor you will be able to um, select 2x SSAA and get the same visual and uh, quality and performance that I get on 4x um, SSAA uh, so you don't need as much anti-aliasing uh, at a higher resolution another thing to note is I highly recommend that you use a DisplayPort cable. I've done extensive testing now with the DisplayPort versus HDMI versus DVI and the very best performance I get in terms of frame rates as well as smoothness is with the DisplayPort cable. In fact, on my machine, I've, I've gained about 10 FPS just from uh, migrating from DVI to uh, DisplayPort. So if it, if it is available, if your monitor supports it and your graphic card supports it, then by all means uh, do use a DisplayPort cable. Texture filtering is at 16 and the texture resolution is at the ultra setting. As you can see here, this is the resolution that I'm running the sim at and I have both V-Sync and triple buffering turned on. Now, in my particular case, it doesn't really matter for me uh, whether VSync is enabled or not because I'm using G-Sync. But what I did take notice of is that when I have VSync and triple buffering turned on, I actually gain about 5 to 10 FPS depending on the situation. So I did get a bit of a performance increase. I'm not sure why. Um, it, it probably has to do with the refresh rate because the refresh rate of my monitor is 165 hertz. So the target frame rate is on unlimited. Now I've seen a lot of videos where people actually limit the frames whether using an external limiter like NVIDIA Inspector uh, or they actually limit it here in the sim. Um, it's been my experience that unlimited, the unlimited settings gives the best performance and the best smoothness um, while running the sim. I have unticked the wide view aspect ratio and in my case it's not really going to matter too much because I'm using Chase Plane and Chase Plane actually controls this option. The MIP map VC panels is checked and the transparency uh, is set to 0%. In terms of the world options as you can see I have the terrain sliders all maxed out and I believe that if you have a lesser machine in terms of specs but a decent graphic card you should be able to um, still max all the terrain sliders out. In terms of the high resolution terrain textures that box is ticked. In terms of scenery objects I have the scenery complexity, autogen vegetation density as well as the autogen building density set to extremely dense. The autogen draw distance however I have set to medium and the difference in performance between medium and high is quite significant. So it will really start bringing the machine to its knees. So um, I don't really care too much for uh, to see things far in the distance. So um, I think this is a good compromise between visual quality and performance. In terms of dynamic 3D autogen vegetation, I have this turned off and for two reasons. One is that it, it does affect performance quite significantly and two the color of the trees when this item is checked look extremely unrealistic. They look kind of like plastic. 
So I have this turned off and I'm using FTX HD trees and I will be showing you all the regions that I have installed for Orbex uh, later in the video. In terms of water and bathymetry, um, I've done a lot of testing on the water detail. And in most scenarios, you will not be able to, to detect the difference in the water quality, the visual quality of the water details, uh, whether you're flying IFR or VFR. And so the medium setting is a decent settings um, as, as you go towards the right uh, performance will start to suffer without too much improvement in visual quality. In terms of bathymetry, it is uh, disabled. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is no use uh, for bathymetry for, for my purpose, at least. In terms of reflections, I've turned off the cloud reflections by default. By the way, you'll have clouds and user vehicles. Uh, what I have uh, changed here is I have terrain, user vehicles and buildings um, for the reflection. And the reason why I have selected those three is in terms of the visual quality, I think those three options really give the best in terms of the visual experience. Moving on to special effects, uh, I've set both to medium. Again, I've done a lot of testing uh, on this and the loss in FPS when these two sliders are maxed does not really justify uh, the, the, uh, in the visual gain that you get. Um, so I decided to leave those at medium uh, in order to uh, save per on performance. In terms of the lighting options, I have HDR lighting enabled and I have brightness, bloom and saturation set to 0 0.95, 0 0.35 and 0 0.95 respectively. Now just a quick note on this configuration. This is what works best with my current PTA preset. So if you have PTA, you might want to uh, play with this configuration to match your preference. In terms of dynamic reflections, I have it turned off as it is um, a performance killer. Dynamic lighting and lens flare are both turned off. Dynamic lighting is another uh, frame rate killer. And lens flare, when you're flying in real life, you will not be able to see lens flare. So it's highly unrealistic. Uh, though it does really look good uh, when you're shooting um, cinematic sequences, uh, but it's highly unrealistic as you do not get lens flare uh, when you're flying in real life. In terms of the shadow quality and shadow draw distance, I have both at ultra. Um, at any different setting, I think um, the shadows look kind of funny and you'll get, you know, like a, a line, a, a cutoff line. Uh, if the draw distance is not at ultra, especially at higher altitudes. So I think um, my machine can take it. So I push this all the way to ultra. And if you have a machine with similar specs, I think you should have no problem uh, pushing this to um, ultra as well. In terms of casting and receiving shadows, I have internal and external vehicles cast and receive. I have the buildings cast shadows and the clouds cast shadows as well. In terms of the weather options, as you can see, the cloud draw distance is set to 80 miles. You can go up to 90 without really major degradation in performance. But then you're flying in heavy thunderstorms and really thick clouds. Uh, you might start suffering uh, a little bit in the performance department. I think this is, again, a good compromise between performance and visual quality. In terms of the cloud coverage density is set to maximum. I have detail clouds selected and both volumetric fog and detail precipitation checked. I've also enabled turbulence and thermal effects on the vehicle. In terms of the traffic options, I have the road vehicles set at 15%, ships and ferries at 5 and the same goes for leisure boats. This is really it for a prepared version for um, simulator settings. Let us now take a look at the regions I have installed for Orbex. In terms of the Orbex uh, products and add-ons, as you can see, I have uh, FTX Global Base Pack, uh, OpenLC Europe, OpenLC North America, Trees HD, Global Vector. I have Bilbao Airport, is a nice airport in Spain. I also have the FTX Global Lights Configurator, North American Airport Pack, and of course, by default, you'll need the Orbex libraries. 
In terms of the European regions, as you can see, I have EU England, Norway, and Scotland. Those two regions I haven't installed, just haven't had the time. Uh, but in terms of EU England, I think this particular region really affects performance too much. And the visual gain you get over Europe OpenLC is not really that much. So I think you can really fly over England and really enjoy the scenery with Europe OpenLC without really the hit on performance. So if you have Europe OpenLC and you're not, you know, extremely particular about, you know, certain landmarks in England, I think you can really enjoy flying over uh, over that region with a Europe OpenLC. North America is another region where uh, you don't really need to buy that many regions uh, now that there is uh, North America OpenLC. I do have the Central Rockies, Northern California, and Southern California installed. Uh, I think they all those three regions add quite a bit uh, that you won't get with OpenLC. The Pacific Northwest and Southern Alaska, I think those those two regions look perfectly okay with the American um, Open LC region uh, by Orbex. Moving on to Australia, as you can see, I do have the region. I haven't installed it yet, simply because I haven't gotten around to it. But I do have uh, the South Island in New Zealand installed. And let me tell you, this is one of the most breathtaking regions that Orbex offers. Another thing that I'd like to show you is my FTX Global Lights configuration. Um, if we go to the control panel here, select P3D version 4. Let me load the profile, lights profile. This is the profile. You can uh, pause the video and copy the exact uh, settings, but I will also be providing you with the lights profile file in the description section of the video. I also want to show you my FTX Global Vector settings. Now, just a quick note on Global Vector. If you have all the options turned on, performance will definitely take a hit. So the control panel here, uh, I will provide you with the profile file as well in the description section of the video. Uh, so I have the highways and primary roads turned on and everything here uh, else is turned off. Railways is turned on and all other features are turned on. Now, when you uninstall or install scenery, make sure you run the airport elevation correction um, uh, option here and run auto configuration. Uh, some airports, for some reason, are not caught uh, by the application. Uh, so I know, for example, Denver in Colorado, uh, Kilo Delta Echo November uh, was not caught and I had to manually uh, disable it uh, so that I can you know, get the scenery to look correct. I think this is really it for Orbex add-ons and regions. Let me now take you through my Invtex settings. In terms of my Invtex settings, I believe you guys can pause the video and copy whatever you fancy from this configuration. In terms of the settings, um, as you can see, I've um, for performance considerations, uh, I've set all the compression types to either DXT1, 5, or 3, with the exception of the sky colors, uh, which is set to 32 bits. If you have precipitate FX uh, from FSFX packages, you might also want to turn off the rain and snow as well. For weather generation in P3D version 4, I am using Active Sky, which is, in my opinion, the very best uh, weather generation engine for P3D. Um, and everything is running at the default settings pretty much, with the exception of the P3D low cloud offset. I've set this to 500. The minimum and maximum cloud draw distance is set to 80, as we saw in the simulator. Just a quick note on my previous complete settings guide, I've set the maximum cloud layers to four, and I've seen no degradation in performance when I, um, when I keep this at five in P3D version four. So um, you might wanna you know, tweak this a little bit to see if it helps performance in your case. Uh, in my case, I really did not notice any degradation in performance. In terms of the camera system that I use for P3D version 4, I am using Chase Plane. And Chase Plane, in my opinion, is the very best uh, camera system available for P3D today. I'm also using Precipitate FX, uh, which brings in a lot of new immersions to the sim in terms of rain and snow representation. 
Highly recommended add-on by FSFX Packages. Let me quickly show you my settings there as well. As you can see, all the options are turned on and you can save on performance. Uh, if you notice degradation performance, you can definitely select shorter uh, contrails so that you can save a, a bit on performance. In terms of my NVIDIA control panel settings, things haven't really changed, but let me show you what is different from default. So the power management is set to prefer maximum performance in terms of texture filtering quality is set to high quality. And by the way, this uh, particular option here, which is trilinear optimization, even though it's turned on, it will be ignored because this is at high quality. And this is really pretty much it in terms of the NVIDIA control panel settings. Now, if you have a G-Sync enabled monitor, there's a step, a very important step that you need to do when you're setting up G-Sync. So when you enable G-Sync by default, it's going to enable G-Sync for full screen. Make sure that for P3D, that you enable G-Sync for windowed and full screen mode. Even when you run P3D in full screen mode, it is still considered windowed uh, mode. So just make sure G-Sync is enabled, otherwise you will get um, a lot of stutters and the sim won't run smooth. So just make sure that this option is ticked. Well, captains, this brings us to the conclusion of our complete settings guide for P3D version 4. I hope that this was an informative and useful video. If you have any questions, please do post them in the comment section below. And as it is always the case, please take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching and bye-bye for now.